Let's turn to Myanmar now. It's been exactly a month since fighting erupted there. Rebel groups came together to launch an offensive against the military junta. Three rebel groups joined hands to form what they call the Brotherhood Alliance. They began with a few skirmishes in the northeastern state of Shan. But over the past few weeks, the attacks have spread into multiple regions. The rebels have made rapid progress. They've overrun scores of military installations. At least 180 military installations, according to some reports. The rebel alliance has had massive tactical gains as well. And more groups have joined them along the way, like the Chin National Army. It has joined ranks with the rebels, with the rebel alliance. The military is now clearly on the back foot. Myanmar is facing a crisis, and this crisis has reached the borders of India and China. Let me show you what's happening in Myanmar's northwest. We're talking about the Chin state. Here, a town called Lai Len Pi has fallen to the rebels. The Myanmar army gave up their posts and fled. Now, Lai Len Pi is a small town, only a few kilometers away from India's eastern state of Mizoram, northeastern state of Mizoram. This is the second town near the Mizoram border to be captured by anti-Hunta rebels. The first one was taken almost two weeks ago. That's the border town of Rikhodar. It was also taken by the Chin National Army. Now, the fighting in the Chin state has caused a refugee crisis. India is taking in civilians fleeing the violence in Myanmar. When I was there, uh, they had so many problems. And uh, the, the army, the military, we came to our village and just like go to one by one houses and, and knocking the doors and ask, ask them to come out everybody so uh, some people are very scared and hiding inside the houses even though they 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 are breaking their door and let them to come out in that time is very worse so new delhi is taking a cautious and humanitarian approach giving shelter to thousands of civilians it's a neighborly act amid testing times but india is also sending back the soldiers who cross the border reports say there are many such soldiers who have just fled when faced with the rebels. And this is not limited to the West. The Myanmar army is losing ground in the northeastern Shan state as well. The Brotherhood Alliance has made significant advances there. The Myanmar-China border gate in the town of Musi is now in the hands of rebels. Now, this is a major trading point between Myanmar and China. It is vital for the trade of goods and consumer items. And now the rebels control it. This border takeover was violent. Hundreds of trucks carrying food, clothes and goods were set ablaze. Ultimately, the Myanmar military lost control, raising alarm bells in China. Beijing has now begun live fire military drills. This is on the Chinese side of the border with Myanmar Shan state. The Chinese army is calling these drills real combat training. Clearly, the fighting in Myanmar has rattled Beijing because the last time China carried out live fire drills near Myanmar, was some six years ago in 2017. So for now, India has taken a humanitarian stance, but China is in combat mode. What about the generals of Myanmar? Reports say they've begun forced conscription. Civilians in the southern city of Yangon have stopped venturing out at night. There is panic in the streets that the military regime is grabbing young men off the streets and taking them away to work as porters for the army. The military junta has, of course, called these allegations baseless. They've also slowed and, in some cases, blocked mobile internet services. People found using satellite internet services are being prosecuted. These crackdowns come as the military regime continues to suffer losses in large numbers. But in this one month of fighting, it's the civilians who've suffered the most. According to the United Nations, more than 300,000 are homeless and displaced, 300,000 in just a month. Hundreds of thousands are caught in, cro in the crossfire, running short of food and water, and in the constant fear of losing their life. There seems to be no end to the fighting, and for some reason, there is no international hue and cry demanding a ceasefire. Myanmar is nobody's cause.